and welcome to my YouTube video. Um, this week I will be painting this lovely terrier. So just before I show you the time-lapse video, I wanted to talk briefly about the different contrasts contrast that there are in this painting. So contrast is important for making a good painting. So just to talk about them in turn then. So the first thing I wanted to talk briefly about is thick and thin paint. So what you really need to do is to think about what areas will be thick and what areas will be thin. So for example here, the diagram shows how I have applied the paint across the picture and notice how I have varied the thickness and thinness across this painting. So the second contrast that I have going on in this painting is the wall, the warm and cool temperatures. So you need to vary these uh, across your picture. So too much warm will make your painting look muddy and too cool will make it look chalky. So thirdly, um, I wanted to, to talk briefly about the colour hues. So here I've varied orange and blue, which are opposite colours. So one highlights the other. Um, I've also mixed the blue and orange into my base browns. So notice how the dog here takes on the colours of his background. And I've put the background colours into the highlights of his face as well. So now I think we should look at the time lapse video of me actually doing the painting. So the painting's done in four sittings. Um, I always work this way. I find it easier to, um, to stop and start than I do to do it all in one go. But obviously, if you prefer a la prima, then, then do it a la prima. So for each layer, I'm still building up the painting as a whole um, as I go along. I'm, I'm not a painter who lays their paint excessively thickly and I like a variety of thicknesses on the canvas. So I may choose to let the layers show right through to, to the wash of the paper. So here for the wash, I've just used raw sienna and turpentine and just let it dry. Make sure it's, it's fully dry before you start though. So on my first layer, I'm just blocking in the shapes and trying to make sure that my drawing is correct. So I would say that getting your drawing correct is probably the most important element um, in your painting. So if you think about it, if you are off with any part of anatomy, um, like for example, you know, the eye is too far over or the nose is out of place, it will, it will just be obvious and it, it will look wrong and it won't matter how well you paint it you won't notice the good painting, it will just look wrong. So you need to get this right if you can. And there are various hacks to help you do this. Um, like for example, you can grid your canvas, um, or you can, you can trace it, or you can project the image onto the canvas and draw around it. But just making sure that you can get it as correct as you can before you start that is really really important obviously if you're doing this exercise to practice your drawing i probably wouldn't recommend um tracing or drawing around it in any way because that's not really going to help your drawing but you know if you're just trying to literally get it on the canvas as quickly as you can so you want to get onto the next stage then you know i don't see an issue with it so this first layer is really quick. I mean, it takes me about 20 minutes and, and then I'm done. So on, on layer two, I'm still thinning my paints with terps, but I'm trying harder to get my values and temperatures correct. You know, I'm still, I'm still guessing at what I think that they are at this stage, but by working on the painting as a whole, this is gonna help you because you can only judge the values and the colours by what is next to it. So you must work on the painting as a whole. My painting is still pretty messy at this stage. I mean, I prefer to start off loose and, 
and then choose which areas I want to, to tighten up and refine as I get further into, into the painting. This layer takes me about 20 minutes. Again, it, it's not a long sitting, so I just put it to the side and then let it dry. I find that working in layers is particularly helpful as each new day, you are actually looking at the painting with fresh eyes. And it's very important that you don't lose that objectivity. So if you're doing it a la prima, you need to stop at the point where you stop seeing. So there are various hacks that can help you see colour and tone. I mean, I always have a black and white image along with my colour reference photo when painting, as this, this helps me split up the colour and the tone. Also as well, you can photograph your painting as you're going along and then turn it into black and white and compare, your, compare it to your monochrome photo. I mean, I do this a lot, I'm always snapping my picture and comparing it to, to what I'm looking at. Also as well, remember to stand back. I mean, if you, if you have a, a reference photo right next to, to the image that you're painting, that will always help as well when you stand back. And make sure that that reference photo is large enough. You don't want it tiny, tiny, tiny. Ideally, it should be the same size as what you're painting. So trying to see colour, you know, it can be very, very tricky. So when I get stuck, I start off by just trying to describe it to myself. So I look at it and I'm like going, right, how would I describe this colour? Is it warm or is it cool? I then, if, if this doesn't really help me, what I then do is I'll lay the colour next to, um, maybe if it's a dark colour or a mid-tone colour, I'll lay it next to a, a mid-tone grey. Or if it's a really light colour, I'll lay it next to a white. And then that will really help you to be able to see in relation to the grey and the white. So you'll be thinking, oh my goodness, like that colour is much warmer than that grey or that colour is even cooler than that grey. So it will really then help you sort of get rid of a load of colours on your palette. I'm always one for um, using technology where you can because I think it's marvellous. So, you know, I would totally encourage you to use technology where you can. However, I would issue a, a word of caution when using color um, the colour pickers that you can find in like Photoshop and Procreate, which will tell you what the colour is. So I would advise you not to do this. So, so this is because if you think about that reference photo that you're looking at, it's made up of thousands and thousands of pixels. And all these pixels, they vary in hues and they vary in temperatures. And all these pixels come together to give you an impression of what you're looking at. So if you use a color picker, it will pick just at one particular pixel, but that might not give you the sense of the color that you're looking at. So for example, the color picker might pick say like a cool blue, but the reality is what you're actually looking at is an olive green. So I would definitely recommend not doing this. Stick to like putting it next to gray or putting it next to white and trying to figure it out that way. So my third layer is where all the hard work is done. So this layer usually takes me about two hours. So hopefully I'm much closer to getting my values and colors correct. So I'm choosing which areas to develop, which areas to place the thicker paint, which areas to leave loose and unfinished. Generally, I've resolved all these issues before I actually sit down to paint because it's a really bad idea to be trying to figure this stuff out as you're going along because you can lose a painting so, so quickly. And if you're not sure what you're actually wanting to do with the painting to start with, you can actually find yourself getting in quite a pickle. So I usually plan my paintings in Procreate before I start. I figured out the background 
and how I'm going to integrate the animals into their backgrounds. I figured out, you know, which areas are going to be loose, which areas are going to be tight. So I've got it all planned before I start. The fourth layer is really a, a tweaking layer. I'm just fixing any little bits that may not be correct, but it's a very, very quick layer, maybe 20 minutes. So in the item description of this video, I've listed all the equipment that I've used for this painting. So if you're wondering what, what colours I've used, what paper, etc., go and have a look at the item description and it will tell you. So I hope you have enjoyed my video. I try and post one every week. So please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you for the next one.